Hello, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel. And oh my glory, I have a project that I have been working on. So I just ordered some books from Amazon. And of course, it came with this wonderful whole big sheet of paper that is perforated. So I'm going to take just a little bit of it as a perforation. I don't care if it doesn't do what it should, you know. I don't really care how it rips. I'm not ironing it first. I'm just using up this packaging and I'm going to rip it down into sections. That one's kind of a natural section. I'm not measuring them. I'm just, okay, that one wants to rip over there. We'll rip it over there. It rips where it rips, I guess. Some of these are going to be narrow. Some are going to be wide. And what are we making? Well, I'm not going to do it with all of these today. We are making book page clusters of all sorts. So get out your book pages. If you have any of this kind of... It, this is very thin. This is from Amazon. It's just their wrapping inside. It's very, very thin. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just dividing these up and I'm not being too careful about it. So now I have a pile of faces. That was so simple. And again, like I said, I have not gone ahead and ironed this. I don't want them ironed. For some of those, I made these yesterday. And then as I was making them, I thought I really should probably do this on camera. So that's what we're doing today. And I outlined the outside and I was using um, Vintage Photo. And I decided that Vintage Photo, while it, while it certainly darkened it a little bit, it didn't darken it enough. So then I try, tried Ground Espresso. Um, and I kind of like how that looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit burnt and I, that's okay to me. So what I'm going to do is take a moment and distress all the outsides here. You pick the color that you want. Uh, you can pick any, I'm, I think I'm going to try Walnut Stain. There we go. Uh, on this, a couple of these and see how that goes. I'll be right back. Walnut Stain for the win. I like how these are coming out. These are um, a much better, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can grab a piece of white to put behind it. You can see how that works versus this is the um, burnt, what is it? So, ground Espresso. That's Ground Espresso. And this is, let me get a bigger piece of paper here. So that's Vintage Photo, that's Walnut Stain, and that's the Ground Espresso. Ground Espresso is definitely the darkest. I think I like this one the best. This one, um, this is the Vintage Photo. It doesn't show up very well around the edges of the thing. I like the Vintage Photo for the middle because it's not overpowering, but I think for my edges, I'm definitely preferring Walnut Stain. All right, so the next thing you're going to need are some of your book pages. And I have, a, I keep, I have a couple different things over here. These are just some extra book pages I was just finding. So I have my little flappy folder here of lined paper and graph paper. So I'm going to keep that out because I'll probably use some of that. These are just little pieces of book page that were getting lost in my big pieces of book page. So I have all of these that I'm going to use. And I'm not going to do a whole bunch on camera. We'll only do a few. Let's just see where we go. Because there's a lot here to do. And I've already done a lot. So I have a little bit of this. And there we go. We'll put those there maybe. And I have, actually, I want to use up some of this. This was from a puzzle book. And I am in the process of actually using several of the pages, but it's just newsprint. And it's very, very old newsprint at that. So 
it tears easily and not necessarily in the direction you want it to go. So let's take here just a little piece and it doesn't have to go in the same direction. I can put it here, keep it here. I was just talking about the coccyx so I think we'll go this way. This is out of, uh, what is that out of? Gray's Anatomy. This is out of the puzzle book. Let's put this here. And I want to take down that weight just a little bit more. Now I don't throw these away because I'm going to make, be, be making paper sometime. I'm not sure when. But there. All right, let me take your note. There's that's three, that's two pieces, and I like to have three pieces on my sheet. So you can see that I have three different types of text, three different types of font. Uh, on occasion, I just have two if I have really big pieces or a really small section. So some of these have two, some of them have three. So let me go ahead and grab just a little bit of my little tiny pages here. I also did uh, some with music. I know it's upside down. Okay, I did some with music. So I, I sat there last night doing this while watching YouTube videos. And speaking of watching YouTube videos, if you are watching this video, please make sure you watch it all the way through. Or if you don't have time to watch it all the way through, Make sure you come back to it. Let me tell you what's going on. I am very close to being able to offer some extras on YouTube, but I need 3,000 watch hours in a 365-day period. Problem is, every 365 days, it shifts. You know, as, as the new day starts, the old day drops off. Pretty soon, I'm going to have a really major day drop off. So what I'm trying to do is get my 3,000 watch hours up before that drops off so that I can then move to the next level of YouTube and offer you guys some perks. But I can't offer those perks unless I have 3,000 watch hours. So please make sure you're watching things all the way through, um, or at least you are, you know what? I, if, if Go back to an old video of mine that you have seen a dozen times or that you've already seen once and you don't need to see again, but, you know, whatever. Just put it on. Go mow the lawn and let the video play. Go do something else. Craft and let it play in the background. I'm just trying to get those watch hours up so I can offer you guys some things. All right, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to distress the outsides of all of these and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just distressed these with a uh, vintage photo. So that's now done. And now I'm going to grab just a page off of my glue book. For those of you who have been watching, you know that I have a huge glue book right now and it's way too big for me. So I'm going to throw this piece away, not away, but into, I'm filing it. There we go. So I don't lose it. And I'm just using Elmer's washable school glue. It's purple. It's disappearing purple is what they call it. Um, and I like it because it does seem to be pretty effective. I've Every once in a while you get a stick that doesn't work so well. But this does pretty well for just about all of this type of job. There we go. So I... Last night when I was doing this, I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos and just sitting there and distressing to my heart's content and then gluing these things in. These small tiny pieces, by the way, are from Goethe, a translation of Goethe. Or actually, it's not a translation. It's Goethe in the original German. So these are some German on here. And that's what I like is to have lots of different, I like the different languages. I like the different fonts. The fact that that one's in italics. Okay, we're going to take a look. We're just going to put these pieces on here. And then we're going to talk about storage. What the heck do you do with all of these once you have them? 
um, ready to go into a journal, where do you keep them? Because that's often one of my biggest problems is I have all of this stuff and then I go to use it and I don't remember where I put it or I don't, it's not as easy to find as I thought it would be. I kind of like how those two shapes mirror each other. You know, like I planned it. Ha! Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Hannibal. Yes, I'm dating myself. Okay, last one. And then we're going to talk about storage. And we're going to talk about um, some decorating. Storage and decorating. This side. Glue goes on this side. You have no idea how many times I've glued something and then realized I've glued the wrong side. Oh my glory. And then you got to figure out, okay, do I want to um, go with it? Do I want to fix it? Do I want to let it dry and do it again? I've done all of those. I've, I've done, I've tried to fix things. I've tried, I've definitely definitely let things dried and then done it again. Okay, I think that particular glue page is done. Let's go right over that big word vacation because I don't want it to be the big word in the in here. All right, so now I have a bunch of glue of these. There's three of them that we just did. Let's talk about storage before we talk about anything else. <clears throat> my initial thought was to put it in a magazine. This was a, a, a Finger Lakes. I, you know that I live in the Finger Lakes. So this was one that I had started to do as this type of thing before I found my other uh, glue book. So I'm using the other one for my master boards. And I thought, well, I'll just use this. I'll, I'll put these in here. And as you can see, I tried it. And it was exactly what I was afraid was going to happen. Um, this paper is really very thin. This this paper from Amazon. This packing paper, it's really not meant to be a heavy-duty stuff. So I'm stiffening it up by adding all of these pieces on it. But still, when I put it on here and then pulled it off, I ripped the back of a couple of these. So this I do not recommend. What I am going to do is take a bunch of these. Let me take one, keep out one of the music ones. We might play with that too. And I have a paper bag here that I'm going to just keep them in. So when I want them, I can just open my bag, pull them out, and use them. So those are all going to, this by the way, is from the Unreliable Narrator in Rochester, New York. It is a wonderful, wonderful little shop. It's a bookstore. And, but it's every kind of book that you can imagine and primarily focused on fantasy and science fiction, which are my genres. I love reading fantasy. I stopped in there and I spent, oh, more than I should have at one point a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. And I absolutely love them. <clears throat> All right. Let's talk about decorating. So you could put um, something like a uh oh like a butterfly over the top of it or a flower over the top of it i'm going to add in a little label hang on i need to get a new glue page oh there's my mammoth glue book let me just pull a page off of here to use it's easier than dealing with the whole book Okay, my husband made banana bread and I had banana bread for breakfast and it is, now my throat's all a little, <clears throat> but I love it. Oh. So these labels came from the Junk Journal Studio and I do want to, I'm going to put a link down below to where you can get these labels. You definitely want to look at them. They're called the Days Gone By series and she just released purple and yellow. 
and I'm in the process of printing them out so I don't have all of them, but 28 pages of labels. Oh my glory. And she has them in three different sizes. So you can print out whatever you want. So like th this particular set, wait, let me find, uh, that's 1B, this is 3B. Let me find the ones that kind of go together. There's 2B, okay, here's 2 and 2B. She always does the large labels, which are great to use as little tiny journaling cards, or you could use it as a tuck spot. You know, I printed it on pretty, on heavy cardstock, um, so I could put it down as a, a as a, as anything. But then she also prints them in medium and large. So like this two for a dollar twenty five is there in large, medium, small, and because she had extra room, tiny. So you get the, you get the same labels in all these different sizes, which is absolutely wonderful. You know, you got this wonderful set of numbers in large, medium, and small. So 28 pages for less than three dollars. And in this particular set, you have yellow and purple. In this set, it was reds, and I only printed out a few of them so far. I have. I bought the set of blues, um, and they're and they're different shades of blue. They're not all the same shade of blue, which is kind of nice because, let's face it, blues can be hard to match. She has a set of neutrals, and I have the large ones up there and the smaller ones down there. Um, she also just released pink and teal. Oh, and another green and blue, but they're all pastels. I also have the plain green. So in any case, these are just really cool. I'm not going to use the, the, the neutrals on here because I think the neutrals would blend in too much. But I thought I might take a set of these and put these down here. I like that there. This has... Actually, that has a little bit of ledger behind it, so I'm thinking it might be nicer on one of my ledger pieces. And this one I need to trim up just a little bit more. It does require fussy cutting, but again, if you're not doing anything except watching the television, my grandmother's hands were never, never still. She was always knitting, um, doing different kinds of knitting making hairpin lace, doing all sorts of things as she was sitting there watching television. And I'm kind of the same way, although I don't watch a lot of TV. I do, however, watch a lot of YouTube. I have become a YouTube fanatic. Okay, so I'm going to put labels on all of these, and I think I'm going to put two with those. I'm going to save that label for one of the other ones. And then let's put some blue ones on here. Ooh, I like this one. This one actually works as, a, as the focal point. I don't know if I want it on that one. I might, I'm going to save that for, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Grab these out because I'm pretty sure that's going to look really nice as a focal point right there. And because it's a stamp, it has numbers on it, so I don't have to add any additional numbers. There. So that one is done. I'll set that one aside. And there's some of my ledger paper. Let me find that other one again with the ledger. I tend to put my numbers at the bottom. I don't know why. I could put it up at the top on this one. Okay. Let's put these back away and out of the way so that I don't mess them up too much. And then I have, what, two, one left. Oh, I just have one left to do. All right, let's grab, let's 
Do I want a yellow or do I want a purple? What color are you shouting at me? Are you shouting at me purple? Good, because I want the purple. So very quickly, I'm just going to cut out This is just plain computer paper that I printed these on. And and don't pay attention to my colors. You want to look at her colors on her machine. Um, I have a little bit of an issue with my printer in that it prints these really deep, rich colors when I tell it that there is photo paper in it. And when I tell it there is just regular paper in it, it does not like to give me the pretty colors. It, it fades them out a little bit. So they're a little bit faded. All right, there. So I've cut two. I'm not going to use two right now. I'll set that one over there. I want to use this one. Right down here. All right. So there we've made a bunch of these and I can put, I can stamp on top of these, although you might want to iron it if you're going to stamp it because it is kind of wrinkled, but I like the wrinkled look to it. So I could put a flower up there. In fact, I have, these are some things that I pre-stamped. Let's see if I have, oh, I've got some cool stuff in there I didn't even know I had in there. Okay. Um, those might be too big. I got two pieces here. Yeah, that's too big. But not if I cut it off. What if I cut it right there? And then. What do I want to do it up with? Let's do that up with... I'm going to check my chart. I don't know if you have done one of these. I just recently did this with my pieces so I can see what color. I want Lumberjack Plaid. Found it. This is Lumberjack Plaid Distress Oxide. And I want to go around the outside of this in that red. And the reason I want it because it matches my red little, oh, and I've got ink on my fingers. So now I have ink all over here. Well, you know what? Let's make it red. When you, it, what is that about? The fact that there are no mistakes, only opportunities. Okay, so now it is bright red, and now it needs something else. Hmm. Only opportunities. I know what it needs. Do I have a little piece here? I do, but I don't know if I like it. There we go. Okay. Where'd I put my glue? So you never know what's going to happen on a Maker Monday, I suppose. You kind of, when you're creating, you never, you just kind of go with it and you see what happens. And sometimes a mistake happens, and then you find a different way to fix it, and you figure it out from there. Because, you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about finding ways to do things. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right up here along the top. And attach my lace. There, and now we have decorated one, weirdly, but we have decorated one. All right, if you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're watching them all the way through. Go back and watch an old one or just put it on in the background. And in the meantime, 
make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you know when the next one is coming out and click like. Let, let YouTube know that you are enjoying these videos. In the meantime, this is Cindy signing off.